We are live. And since I did not announce this at all on purpose, I wanted to see if anyone would come. So we'll wait for the first few people. And if it doesn't work, then next time I'll properly announce it and then do a stream. I just wanted to see who would come if I did an impromptu live stream and how many people would come. So I mentioned last week when I did another stream that I would try to do more live streaming. So this is my attempt at that. I'll try to do at least once every two weeks uh, or once a week, depending on my schedule, to interact with you guys a little more. Yes. Oh, hell, wow, there's already 39 people. Wow, I was, I'm really surprised at that. I expected like four people <laughs> for the first 10 minutes. <laughs> would you sign my book I bought for you? Yes. Uh, if, if you meet me, I will sign it. <laughs> and today I'm going to be making, I'm going to be cooking something. So some people suggested that I should, Oh, that's, oh, seriously? Really? You made kimchi and you make, and you made kimchi jjigae with that? That's awesome. Billy goats. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a couple of hashtags, Billy goats or go Billy goats or my Billy goats or Billy goats cult. It's lagging again. Yes, it might lag. We'll see how it works this time. Last time we had a lot of issues where it kept crashing. So I hope it's better this time. I have since restarted my phone and the app. So we'll see. Yes, I'm doing very good. So I'm going to be making something for you guys. And today's broadcast will be short. I'm only going to broadcast for maybe an hour at most. Um, I'm going to be making something for you guys that I used to make when I lived in Korea. And I don't make it very often anymore just because it's so unhealthy and <laughs> looks disgusting. But it's really cheap to make. And that's really why I had it in Korea. When I lived in Korea, um, one of my friends, one of my Korean friends, I'm watching you from Istanbul, India. Oh, cool. Wow. There's people from everywhere. Um, one of my Korean friends taught me that you can make sandwiches using ramen, which you might have seen a sandwich like that before, like ramen instead of bread. No, 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 not like that. This is, I cannot, for the life of me, I can't find a single photo or post about this kind of sandwich anywhere on the internet. So it's different. It's not a sandwich with ramen as the bread. No, that is I would not like that because you can't hold it. If the sandwich is ramen, it's going to be like oily and soft and you can't hold it. So, you know, this sandwich is <laughs> We got that in Holland too. Yum yum. Oh yeah, yeah. This is like the uh, American made. I'm not sure where it's originally from, if it's actually a Japanese company or not, but I never saw this in Japan, but they have this everywhere in LA. Maruchan, it's like 20 cent ramen. It's you can buy it for 10 cents on sale. So yeah, I like this kind because it's so it's guilt free because of how ridiculously cheap it is, and the flavor is pretty good. It's USA. Okay, yeah, I thought it's a USA brand, but the the name sounds Japanese, but I'm pretty sure it's just a USA brand made by a Japanese company in the U.S. Uh, because on the back it also says made in the U.S. Maruchan, Irvine, California. There you go. Anyway, so I like this because if you buy normal ramen, it's like, you know, you spend a couple dollars, but this is like 10 cents or 20 cents maximum. So you don't care about it. It's like, it makes you feel good. College students gourmet food. Yes. Uh, meet in person events. I'll do another one in the future. I did one before in Korea, but it was very small just for a few people. Dane, watching an American Korean teacher from Czech Republic. Oh, cool. Hey, um, how do you say hello in... I don't know what language, Czech Republic, what language you speak, actually. It's the warm life energy. Um, so yeah, so this is a sandwich, like I said, I can't find a single post anywhere on the internet about this kind of sandwich. So similar ones, yes, but not this kind, not this kind. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start cooking. So first thing you need to do is the most important part. You gotta cook 
the ramen. Actually, let me see if I can get this. Okay, so you gotta cook the ramen first. And to do that, <clears throat> we first need some water. So let's get some water. I'm gonna get some good water from my fridge, not the sink water. So this is not how you normally make ramen, I know. But there's a reason for this. So you get, a, you get about this much water, maybe a little less. You don't, want, you don't need the water to cover the ramen. You just wanna have enough, ram, enough water to be able to cook, to boil the ramen. It doesn't need to be completely soft. Okay, so <laughs> let's see. Do you play video games? Uh, yes, I play Team Fortress 2 fairly regularly, but not a lot, but I'm actually very good at that game. And a couple other games I'm pretty good at. Uh, DDR, the dancing game I'm really good at. Um, but generally games, I'm not so great. Just a few that I'm good at and that's about it. American fridges have water coming out of them? Yes, of course. We have water filters too. You don't have a in now. I hope so. I've never been to Europe before. I'd like to. Ramen burger. Yes, it's not ramen burger. It's not ramen burger. I've seen many sandwiches and burgers that use ramen in them or on the top of them, like instead of the bread. This is not that. This isn't even similar. It ha it's, it's got some similarities with that, but this works a little bit differently. You'll see why. Do fridges in other countries not have water coming? I don't know. Do they not? Most American fridges, I think you can get a lot of fridges without water, but it's, it's common that behind the refrigerator, there's a water, uh, what do you call like a pipe? So it's common that houses and apartments will have a pipe there. So even if your refrigerator doesn't have this, like cheap refrigerators won't have this sort of panel, but you, would, you could add this refrigerator later because we always have a water thing behind the place where refrigerator goes. So it's pretty common. Okay, so the water's kind of boiling a little bit. So now we are good to go. So let me see how I should film this. I don't wanna, okay. So I don't, I've got my microphone here so I can't go too far. Okay, so you open the packet. You can do this with any ramen. You don't have to use Marichan ramen. So shake off the extra stuff. Okay, there you go. Take the packet, keep, keep this packet. Do not throw it out. We will use this a little bit later. That looks hot. What looks hot? The ramen? It's very hot right now. I mean, outside, but it's boiling, so. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna have to get a, there we go. That's what I want. Okay, so <laughs> put this farther back so I can kind of show you what I'm doing here. Okay, and the point is not to make the ramen completely cooked. The flavor does not matter so much, honestly. You can do this with any flavor. So it, it will, you'll use the flavor packet a little bit, but not too much. So any flavor is okay. Italia, ah yeah. Where did I get this recipe? I heard it from a Korean friend and he heard it from another Korean. It's not a popular recipe, but like, when I was living in Korea, I heard it. I thought, oh, this must be something Korean college students do. This must be something foreigners living in Korea do. No, nobody does this. I can't find, for the life of me, I can't find a single post about this. First live stream upon it, all my comments. Really? Well, I try, to, I try to read everything, but I can't. Okay, so you want to go until the bottom is a bit soft. So the bottom's not soft yet, a little bit. And the trick is, you want to keep it in the square shape because we're going to be using this to make a sandwich. Do you still have a donation page? Yes, I do. I have a Patreon. My Patreon is not that popular. I have a few, a couple dozen people who support me there. And my Patreon is just, I'll upload some extra content there. I give some updates that I don't post on my other social media, sometimes like personal life or, um, you know, videos I'm working on or ask personal questions. And some, I'll also post early videos there, like a week before I upload them to my YouTube, I'll post them on my Patreon. But I, if you can support me, if you have the financial means to do that, great. If not, that's fine. I'm happy you're watching my videos. <laughs> I'm happy you're subscribed. Overwatch, yeah, I'm not really interested in Overwatch. I'm, I like 
Team Fortress 2 better, I think that it's got a higher skill ceiling than Overwatch because you can, because of the motion mechanics, there's a lot more movement required. It's not only just aiming and like timing, it's more about motion movement, and I like that. But you know, the game, they're both good games. I just prefer Team Fortress 2 after seeing Overwatch a bit. So if you're ever playing Team Fortress 2 and you get dominated by a soldier with a black box, then that might be, and a, and a gibbous, hat, gibbous hat, that might be me. Followed your first book, I followed like two years. Why is a little bear named Keycat? Um, oh, hold on, let me uh, turn this down so I don't burn it. Okay, so we've, uh, the key, key, I'll explain that in a second. Okay, so we got this. So now it's mostly cooked. It's not completely soft through, but it's mostly soft. So I'm gonna keep cooking it a little, oops, I hit the microphone, cord, okay. So I'm gonna keep cooking this for a little bit. And you really wanna keep it in the square shape as much as possible. It doesn't have to be, but I think it's nicer if you do. Okay, and I'm gonna cook this until the water's gone because you want it to be first, you wanna first boil it so that the ramen is not hard. And then after it's boiled, you don't want it to be soft. You wanna harden it a little bit after first getting it soft. So boil it. Then you fry it a little bit. So do you watch anime? Uh, not these days. I, I have seen some and I have really liked some, but I don't watch it these days. I really liked a show called Last, uh, Last Exile. This was like 15 years ago. I really liked that. And I thought One Punch Man was fun, um, but I don't watch too much these days. I just don't have a lot of time to watch TV shows. Okay. Okay, so now that we've got most of the water, and then you keep cooking until most of the water's gone. Okay, now that most of the water's gone, next thing we gotta do is add a little bit of oil. Oh, I forgot, I didn't get the oil ready, so I gotta use this gigantic oil container here that I got from Walmart. <laughs> Seriously, when you do, a, if you do a lot of cooking, like I do a lot of cooking, you just buy the largest, cheapest containers of everything you can get. And canola oil, always canola oil. Do you read mana? Uh, do you like K-pop? Um, I don't listen to much K-pop. I am aware of K-pop though. Okay, so you wanna add a little bit of oil to the top because we are going to, maybe like less than a tablespoon, maybe like one teaspoon of oil. And then turn on the, turn on the heat again. Because what we're going to do actually is fry the ramen just a little bit. We want it to be a little bit hard. If you have a soft, soft ramen in this sandwich, it is not good. Okay, meanwhile, so this is frying here. So I added just a little, tea, like a teaspoon of oil on top. Let me flip it. So I wanna make sure I don't mess this up. So, so all you guys are watching and it's gonna be recorded forever. Okay, so just fry that a little bit. You don't need it, you don't need it to be rock hard or anything. You don't want it to be burnt or actually fried. You just wanna fry it a little bit. Then we come over to our refrigerator and we get out. Eh, we don't need a large egg. Let's do one egg. So one regular egg. Okay, I'll show you something cool. Some new learner of Korean. The best way to teach Korean to middle students. Middle school, I think, is a bit young for learning Korean without uh, the traditional ways. So if you're that age and you're a middle school student, I would say learn Korean through simply exposure and practice, not through grammar study. Because 14-year-olds cannot really study grammar the same way you and I can. They can't really comprehend that type of language yet. Okay, so yeah, you add an egg in. And then I'm just going to go down so you can see. Have you watched Mob Psycho? No, I haven't seen what kind of eggs? What do you mean? We only have one kind of egg in the U.S. Like, m mainly. It, I mean, you know, we have, like, the organic stuff, but it's all just egg. Okay, so let me turn down the, the heat. So now we put an egg on top of it. So it's got a little bit of oil, so it's kind of a little bit harder. And then you fry an egg on it. This, the egg is not 100% necessary, but I think it's great because it helps the ramen keep its shape. And it adds even more calories to this already completely unhealthy meal. So this is, I counted the calories in this sandwich and it's over 1,000. 
Oh, how do you like them done? Ah, poached. Poached eggs. Or if it's in like soup, then soft boiled. 친구를 만날수록 친구를 만날수록 기뻐져요. Yeah, yeah. 빌리 한국은 지금 새벽 2시예요. <laughs> oh, hey, I think you came last time too. Hangari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hangari, you came last time. Yeah, it's a lot of calories. I, I'm not exaggerating. It's at least 950 calories. Bare minimum, this is more than 950 calories. But depending on how much oil you add and how much seasoning packet you add and how much of the other ingredient you add, it can easily be over a thousand. Yes, Shaylin Chapman. Oh, hey, welcome back. How do you read Korean so fast? Uh, you study it and you get fast. I'm not super fast though. Korean, a, a native Korean could read faster than me but that's normal. Okay, so now we've got this kind of still cooking here. I'll, kind of sh I'll show it to you. So we've got the egg on top, which is cooked, and the ramen, which is cooked. So that's mostly done. The nice thing about this recipe is that you can make most of it inside of the same frying pan. You don't have to use any extra equipment. So next thing, let's do... Actually, let me start the bread before it gets too late. So, sorry, this is my like eight-year-old toaster here, or nine-year-old toaster almost. But it still works amazing, and you can't buy it anymore. It was like $15 at the time. Okay. Oops, that's a rice cooker. Okay. Pepperidge Farm remembers. Let's put in some toast, because toast will go on the outside of the recipe. So let me make sure I don't burn this. Let's see. Let's set this to two and a half. Okay. So yeah, toast, you can use any kind of toast you want when you make this. It doesn't have to be white. I just use white toast because I think it tastes good. But you can use, you know, whole grain if you want to, if you want to trick yourself or lie to yourself and, and tell yourself that this somehow is healthy to make, then you can use whole grain bread or whatever kind you want. But I just use white bread because I know like there's no way I'm losing any weight eating this sandwich, which is one of the reasons I usually don't make this anymore. Let's see. None of the ingredients have sponsored this live screen. That's right. <laughs> no, there's no cheese. You can add cheese. You can add American cheese if you want to do this, which you would add right on top of here. You could add American cheese right on top of there, but I don't like that. Okay, so the next part is spam. And if you're in America where Americans dislike spam because they've never tried it before, trust me, this tastes good. If you cook it, it tastes very good. But yeah, Americans don't like spam, in case you didn't know. Uh, we think that it's gross and over salty and fake meat. Okay, so I added this. You add the spam on top. And the reason I'm adding the spam on top is because I just don't want to get a separate pan and kind of just get the spam to go under because you want to cook the spam. And I'm just putting this, the ramen back on top because I don't want to take it off because I want to keep it warm. So now what we got to do is fry the spam. Spam is imitate, it's not, it's real ham. They use real ham to make it. And let's see, it's got, what is it even made of actually, to be honest? I'm not quite sure what it's made of. They don't have the ingredients listed here. Fully cooked, ready to eat. Yeah, I have no idea. I just know it's made with meat. I believe it is made with real ham. Um, one ninth of water out of its actual food. Yeah, yeah. But Americans don't like spam. We think it's like gross because we don't try it. We don't ever eat it. Pork shoulder and ham. Okay. That makes sense. I know it's real. I know it's originally made of real ham, but they add so much uh, like salt and preservatives and like fat to it. So it, it doesn't taste like regular pork. Spam is a little salty. Okay, let me get a plate. I'm just going to put my bread. Actually, no, I'll leave the bread in the toaster so it doesn't get cold. Yes, yeah, spam is very salty sometimes. Okay, I want to show this whole thing. I want to show now that then it's all dark. Let me put it over here. Okay, so now I'm cooking this. I'm going to turn over the spam so I can cook the other side now. So it's kind of tricky to, we're like trying to maneuver this. 
just so that you don't have to use the another trick like plate or something to cook it because i just like doing it all in the same because like part of this is that it's like it's a lazy quick way cheap way to get a thousand calories so i don't like using extra plates or any extra equipment or anything when i make it just this one thing so everything can go in here is korean spam better than american spam no it's the exact same there's no difference in flavor whatsoever because spam was originally made in america and the reason that oh yeah this is interesting the reason that spam is in korea is because of the korean war after the korean war and during the korean war there was a meat shortage they didn't have enough products for the soldiers i mean for regular koreans you know they're using it for all the war so americans had brought over a few things vienna sausages and all these things are popular in korea and used in korea today vienna sausages uh, baked beans spam american cheese these four things are very popular still in korea as well as a few other things but um spam especially koreans just loved it they cooked it in their food and they used it instead of other meat that they didn't even have so spam became popular in korea but at the time it was only used it was only considered like an emergency food in america and nowadays it's people still think like spam that's gross like I don't want to eat spam. I don't want to touch it. But Americans actually never try it. Um, if people try it, of course we like it because it tastes good. Where did ramen originate from? Originally ramen, uh, probably originally from China, but ramen noodles, instant ramen noodles that you know of are from Japan. Those were created in the early 1900s in Japan. Do you like BTS? I don't dislike them. I just don't know their music. Um, but I appreciate that they're bringing lots of people to become interested in Korean. And I, I know some of their songs because they play at the restaurants when I'm in Korea. What is bibimbap? Yes, it is traditional to Korean. That's totally traditional. Oh yeah, Spam and Monty Python. Uh, did you know that's actually where the word uh, spam for email comes from? Email spam, the word using spam for talking about email is actually from that Monty Python skit. There, boom. Which I think is pretty fun. American trying anything? Yeah, no, we're very close-minded, I think, for food. Yeah. Cup ramen was the best invention of all time. I think it's a great invention. Decade, only 160 students were studying Korean. Nah, there was way more than that. That's not true. When I was studying Korean, there are, st there are already a few thousand. There are already thousands of people studying Korean. But it's exploded a lot now, definitely. But I wasn't like only 160. I've learned 10 consonants, 10 vowels so far. Uh, continue to learn the rest of the alphabet and then start learning grammar. Billy knows Korean better than me and I'm Korean. Oh, Stitchy! <laughs> Stitch. Yeah, right, sure. People ask to take pictures with you? No, I'm not that famous. <laughs> I've only had one person ever ask me to take a photo with them. So it just doesn't happen. Okay, let's check to see how this spam is doing. Okay, this spam is getting nice and cooked on one side. So let me just turn it over and finish cooking the other side. And I think then it's gonna be about done. Pronunciation perfect. Thank you. Well, I did practice a very long time. Yeah. What state do you live in? Oh, I'm in LA, in California. Go well, close to LA, close to not in downtown, but LA is really big. Please tell me about KeyCat. Oh, your videos are awesome. Thank you. I'm going to LA, KCon. Uh, I might go to KCon. I'm not sure because it it depends if I get invited to KCon. If I get invited, then I'll go. So I'll see. I would like to go, but who knows? I know that's August 12th, the 10th, 11th, and 12th. No, KeyCat, um, there is just, I wanted to name it after something that sounded like KitKat, the chocolate. But yeah, yeah, so, but I didn't want to name it KitKat, the chocolate. So I was thinking, well, what can be a cute name? So I was like, okay, well, let's name it like Yorisei Koyangi, like a key cat. I don't know, like a cat, like it looks like a bear, but it's a cat because it's kind of like a pet for Billy. 
I don't know. It's just, I just thought it was a cute name. Okay, so now I think this is done. I don't want to burn it. Okay, so we have most of it done right here. The next step is I told you to keep the packet. Uh, of course, English. This kimchi really tastes like kimchi's good. You might not like it your first time, but uh, everyone likes it. Pretty much, like almost everybody likes kimchi. If you like um, sauerkraut, if you like sauerkraut, it's kind of a similar feeling, though the flavor is different. Okay, so add a little bit of this powder back on top. I know it sounds gross, but trust me, it's okay. Don't add the whole thing. That would be that would be disgusting. Seriously, I one one time I added half the packet, and that was gross. So just a little bit, just for a little bit of extra flavor, and you can throw the extra away. Let me just toss that. Really go. It's soju or makgori. Ah, neither. I don't really drink very much. I've had both, and I would pick soju, but uh, maybe I maybe I pick makgori. Do you find Korean ingredient easily in the U.S.? Yes, in L.A. here, I can find any ingredient I want fairly easily. A uh, few exceptions, but most things are okay. All right, so the final step. So now we have something that looks like this. So we have spam. Actually, oh, I got to flip it. I got to get the spam out. Spam's got to go on top. Ah, okay, whatever. Okay, so I've got spam on top, the egg, then the ramen underneath that. Let me just trim it a little bit so it's okay. Yeah, you don't want like things hanging off because it makes it hard to eat. Okay, so I got spam on the top, then the egg, then the ramen below that. A little bit of the ramen seasoning is also on top of the egg. Now for the final step. Yeah, it's it's actually it's a thousand calories. I counted. It's at least a thousand calories. So it could be a little more if you add, like you know, if you add butter or you add more oil or anything like that. The last step is this. So it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be this brand. It doesn't have to be this flavor. Um, any kind of jam is, or jelly is okay. And I actually might need a new jar because this is totally like looking sad. It's, it's like almost completely empty here. <laughs> okay, this sounds, this, I know this sounds totally gross, but believe me, it doesn't. It's not, it's good. It actually goes w very well with the ramen. So put on jelly onto it, on top. Sounds gross. Why are you putting jelly on top of ramen, which has spam on it? No, the spam basically acts as something salty <clears throat> and the jelly acts as something sweet. So you've got this sweet and salty thing. The sweet and salty. Uh, I might need to get out my other jar of jelly. And yeah, like I said, it doesn't have to be strawberry jelly. You can use this. The same thing will work with any kind of jelly. Uh, also. Okay, yeah, the, the stream, if it freezes, just wait a second, it'll come back. Okay, so I think I need, yes, yes. Okay, so I used all the all of the <coughs> strawberries, so now I'm going to use some boysenberry. So let me just get some boysenberry out. Okay, so let's add a little bit more of boysenberry just because I don't have enough of the strawberry only on here. And that's more than enough. Oops, I added a little bit too much. Okay, so let me take some of this back off. And okay. Yeah, if the stream dies, because the, sometimes the YouTube app doesn't work too great. If the stream dies, just wait like, you know, 10, 20 seconds, I'll be right back. Okay, so then I put this in the sink because I don't leave stuff around the house. I'm not a slob. So we Clean up a little bit, throw away this. I love American trash cans. Sorry, I just have to brag. <laughs> I can just throw anything, anything away in the same receptacle. Okay, so now we got the bread. So how to make it is you take the bread, just like a sandwich. Then you take all of this stuff that looks disgusting, looks absolutely hideous. And you put this right on top of there. Oops. And believe me when I say there is no, hold on, let me 
make sure this stays on. Do, do, do. Okay, there we go. I believe when I say there is no clean way, there's no neat way of eating this. If you make this, it's going to look disgusting. It's going to be difficult to eat. So, let's eat it. Okay, put this over here. It's time for a mukbang. Can you fit all of that in your mouth? I don't know. See, lately I've actually lost a lot of weight. I used to weigh, back in January, I, was, I hit 67 kilograms. And after that, I realized, oh, I can't wear my small size shirts anymore. So I went on a diet, <laughs> not, not like a severe diet or anything, because I wasn't fat or anything. I just wanted to fit my small shirts again. And I lost um, seven, nine kilograms. I lost nine kilograms. So right now I'm 58, 57, 58 kilograms right now. So I don't know if I can even eat this whole thing. How tall are, oh, I'm uh, 170, 171 centimeters. Going to point it out last time. Oh yeah, I've lost weight. I'm pretty happy with it actually because I can wear my shirts again. And people say I look good losing weight. So of course I want to keep it off. Yeah, I'm not trying to gain weight. I'm not trying to lose weight now. I'm just trying to like, I fit, I had some eating, not dis not problems, but like issues where I would just eat too much and I would eat too often and I would eat too late, like weird times because I do lots of editing and filming, so I don't get much exercise. So anyway, so yeah, this is what it looks like. It's, I swear to you, it, it, is, it looks absolutely disgusting, but it will not taste disgusting. So I made this a lot. <laughs> this is, with the ingredients I've added today, this is at least over a thousand calories. I'm taller than you, I'm a 60 year old. Oh, really? It's pretty funny. Okay, so. I'm not sure the best way I could eat this because I want to show you guys this while I eat it. I got, I got an idea. Hold on. When you're done. Yeah, it looks disgusting. Okay, I got this thing. It's kind of... <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, it's mukbang time. So let me, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to put this so you guys can see because, you know, it's kind of difficult to see. Oh, let me lower my camera. That's how I should do this. Let's just lower the camera. There we go, much better. Okay. Can you finish it alone? I don't think so. The difference between A and A. A or uh. I have a video about that actually on my channel, Learn Korean episode 60, which talks about uh, pronouncing the different vowels and stuff. Okay, so here we go. This is the ramen sandwich. And like I said, if you find any other pictures or videos of this or blog posts, let me know. I haven't found a single one that makes the sandwich with an egg in the ramen, bread on the outside, and jam on the inside. But like I said, so this might be some unique thing that the person showed me. Anyway, so let's give it a try. Mm. It's, okay. The ramen is just for the texture, so it's really nice. And it's very salty because of the spam. But you know, as an American, we don't really think that things are too salty when we eat them. We just think, oh, nice and salty. So yeah, it's just nice and salty, not too, not too salty. Hmm. Oh no. So, Tamemono wa Warukimimasu. Are you learning Japanese? 
That food looks bad. <laughs> You'd say something, it looks gross, like Bazu Sol, like looks gross. Seriously, gain two, three pounds after eating this. Mm. And the, the jam is really good because if you don't put the jam on, it would just taste salty and boring which is the reason why I never saw anyone post this. Like the, the sandwiches I saw, they all just have like cheese or ramen as the part or like meat or other things on it, but not simple like this with the jam. The jam makes it edible. The jam makes it so you can just eat this like by itself. Mm. I'm writing to you for 10 minutes. Oh, if, if, you, if you wrote something and I didn't reply, um, you can just say it again because if I can't, I can't read everything. Where's the baby? No, he's not eating this sandwich. It's like, it's like if you pull like a string on a sweater and it just keeps coming out. That's what it's like eating the ramen. I'll like take a bite and it pulls out more and take a bite, and pulls out more. I use strawberry and boysenberry jam. But my favorite strawberry with this, just cause it's tradition, it's like simple, but I didn't have enough strawberry. So I mixed with boysenberry and it's good too. No, my wife will not touch this. Nah, together it's better. Mm. If you just spam is nasty, nah. If you just like open up, open up a can of spam and take a bite out of that raw spam, you're not going to like it. But that's not how you're supposed to eat spam. You're supposed to cook it, like fry it. And it's really good. He looks so married. I don't think so. I think I look the same. I haven't changed. Kid in school, I have a Lunchable. <laughs> yeah. Damian, the sandwich on Tradition for Billy to Reese. No, no. I cook a lot of things, but I don't cook that much Korean food. Mmm. This is really good. And every ingredient is necessary for this. Like, like I said, some people might add American cheese to it, but that's not necessary, really. There's enough salt. Like American cheese would give a cheesy, salty flavor, but there's enough of that salty, nice flavor from the Spam and from the uh, uh, ramen powder that is not necessary to add cheese to it. But you can if you want. Masirko? Oh uh, yeah, I should probably drink something. <laughs> I bought you dumb? No, no way, I bought this t-shirt. This is the kind of clothes I like to wear. And this is how I like to do my hair. Because I don't have to do anything. What's the difference between American cheese? American cheese is not real cheese. It's, um, it's made with, um, I think it's made with like milk and oil. And it's mostly oil or something. So it's not cheese, which has to be made of only dairy. With no spam, it would be, taste a bit weird. Uh, yeah, if you made this without Spam, it would still be good, but I think everything going in this sandwich makes it perfect. Everything goes together well. Ramen milkshake. Mmm. Spam for something else. Yeah, I'm sure you could use any sort of Spam substitute. Any sort of pork substitute would be okay. I have one, one time I made this sandwich with, um, regular ham slices 
and that was okay too. It wasn't as good as this, but it was okay. So if you wanted to, you could support, you could substitute real spam with like vegan spam or veg. I'm not sure what they would have, but yeah, you can definitely substitute it with another kind of meat. Uh, you could even go with like beef if you want to be crazy or like, you know, a substitute of different kinds of things. The point is the, the reason that the spam is so good is because of the fat flavor and the salt. So if you can substitute with something else that also has a fatty and salty flavor, it's okay. Um, and the bread, you can also do any kind of bread. I just use this kind of bread because it's hard and easy to hold, but you can do like whole grain bread, but don't kid yourself, it's not healthy. Even if you use whole, whole grain bread, Mm. Yeah, this original recipe I heard from a Korean guy who heard it from another Korean. Mm. But I have, I have changed it a little bit to my own style to make it easier. The original recipe was a bit harder to do because they cooked like separate pots and like a separate fry pan, frying pan. But I do it all in one together. That's kind of my style. Got pranked? No, no, no. No way. If I got pranked, then I'm totally happy with the prank. <laughs> How are you so thin if this is the kind of stuff you're eating? This isn't the kind of stuff I normally eat. Um, but my diet is usually eating twice a, twice a day, like maybe a basic, basic breakfast. Um, if I have junk food, have it as early as possible. And don't snack between meals and don't snack after my meals. And then I stop eating when I feel satisfied, not when I feel full. That's pretty much it. Think for two people? Nah, it's all me. But yeah, if you're dieting, avoid, avoid this thing. I mean, seriously, it's a thousand calories in one sandwich, in one meal. Like you could eat two, like a, we call that the McDonald's burger, you know, two of those big McDonald's burgers. And that would still be like fewer calories than this. Mm, thank you. Big Mac. I couldn't remember the name. Yeah, you could eat two Big Macs is probably fewer calories than this. But this is cheaper. Two pieces of bread, one egg, one slice of spam, you know, 10 cents of a, of a can, and then uh, ramen, 20 cents, and that's it. What type of flavor? Ah, you can use any flavor. I use the cheapest Maruchan. Uh, shrimp flavored ramen, but you don't need to use the flavor. You just need the plain noodles. He plans for volume four. Oh, hey, Zelsey. Uh, no volume four. I have no plans for that, but I have plans for other stuff. I'm doing two books right now. Like my, I'm doing a workbook for Korean Made Simple One, and I'm doing another book. Um, so I can't talk about too much yet because we're not sure when it's going to get released or how that's going, but it's, it's a book that I'm working on together with Talk To Me In Korean. <laughs> And then after that, I have plans for, I'd like to do a couple other books. Like I'd like to do a grammar, a grammar compilation, like a better version of the Korean Grammar for International Learners book, which is my favorite book. I want to do like a, an updated, better version of that because that's really old and unorganized. I'd like to do an updated version of that. Please do egg yolk. No, nah, I'm not good at egg yolk. Boing, boing. I got to learn some egg yolk from uh, uh, Korean guys. Where can I get your books? Um, you can get them on Amazon or on bookdepository.com. Uh, my website. How many languages do you speak? I speak two. I speak English and Korean. And I know some other languages, but I don't speak them well. So I don't say that I speak them. Like I know Japanese decently, but I'm not fluent. 
Are you a single Pringle? What does that mean? Am I single? No. I hope you cringed. If you didn't cringe, I don't know. That's just weird. Oh, really, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, welcome. Mm. This is good. I didn't think I'd I'd want to finish the whole thing. I thought I'd eat like half of it on the stream. Yeah, I should drink something. Well, before I finish this whole thing, let me get something to drink. Let's see, what do I got? I got La Croix. How do you even pronounce this? Okay, how do you even say this? La Croix. La Croix. Like, how, you cannot pronounce this. They put an X in it. And this is marketed to Americans. La Croix. So I always just call it La Croix. Because you can't pronounce it. Um, but La Croix, La Croix. I usually save those for a special occasion. So instead, I've got the uh, knockoff brand, Belle Vie, Beautiful Life, grapefruit flavor, which is basically like, um, it's basically just like cheap carbonated water with a hint of grapefruit flavor, like just to show that they, just, just for legal purposes, they added it a little bit. I know, I, I know it should be La Croix, it should be like French, La Croix, but I don't want to say that because... <laughs> It's marketed to Americans. Americans don't speak French. Like I learned some French, but as an American, Americans don't speak French. So for all we know, it should be La Croix. Adios, Billy. Yeah, I heard it's extremely, extremely hot right now. Uh, it's, it's really hot here too, but it's not, it's not humid. Yeah, I barely speak English. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Grandpapa, are your granddad's French? Okay. You have to start off by watching Rick and Morty first. What do you mean? So I can increase my IQ to 150? Live in Sin City. It's hot and humid. Yeah, it's pretty hot up there. Yeah, I thought French sounded really pretty, so that's why I studied it too. Okay. Lovecraft? Oh, really? <laughs> Minecraft? Rick and Morty, I'm an intellectual. Yes. Yeah, I used to be pretty dumb, and then I started watching Rick and Morty. And I just woke, I just woke. Seriously, instantly. But you know, you would understand that if you watch the show, you know, it's not for regular people. Because it's all sarcasm. Don't think, like, anyone who watches Rick and Morty will know that, but it's a joke. That was legit, really good. Oh, you know, sometimes like you want some, sometimes you want like really fancy food or, you know, specific food. Sometimes you just want junk food that has no budam. Like one of my, okay, one of my favorite Korean words or one of the most useful Korean words is the I thing. I like budam. La croix. Yeah, 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 la croix, la croix. Oui, bien sûr. Bien sûr, c'est la croix. I'm just joking. Diabetes in a sandwich, yeah, diabetes. Budam is a good word. It's like, budam means like, um, like a feel, it has a few meanings. It can mean like a burden, 
like, you know, you're carrying a burden or like some uh, heavy responsibility that you have, like, oh, I feel so much budam, I feel so much burden from having this job or from, you know, I have to work or like he expects me to do something, you know, that kind of budam. But I also think it's useful for like, if you buy expensive food, like you go to the store and you buy some expensive food, then um, you feel a little bit of like pressure that you got to enjoy it. Like, you know, you bought this food, you got to eat every little bite. You got to eat it slowly. You have to have it with a good drink, watch it in front of a TV. You know, it's this big deal when you have food. And the more expensive the food is, the more that is. Like if you go to a fancy restaurant, you have like, you feel this inner, in, inner pressure, this inner responsibility, this burden to care a lot about the food that you're eating when it's expensive. So you go to a fancy restaurant and you feel like, oh, I gotta at least take a photo. I gotta drink it, I gotta eat slowly. I have to chew this slowly, I have to enjoy it, I have to have this, I should order this, you know. I should be nice to the waiter if I enjoy my food. It's just a big, big thing. And sometimes you're okay with that. What type of wines do you like? Oh, I hate wine, I don't like it, it tastes gross. <laughs> but if you have something that's as cheap as this ramen sandwich, which would probably be what? Take the bread cost, say 10 cents for the bread. 20 cents for the ramen, 30 cents. The spam was the most expensive, but you could probably get that for a quarter if you, if you use the can and cut it. So 55 cents, just say five cents. No, no. Let's say a 50 cents for the egg, although it's not. No, let's say tw 20 cents for the egg because you buy a dozen for like a dollar now. So no, that would be 10 cents then. Okay, we're at 65 cents total. Let's just add another five cents in case. So 70 cents for the ingredients, less than 70 cents for all the ingredients to go into this 1,000 calorie sandwich. You only have to look at a picture or a title of Rick and Morty. <laughs> yeah, you get anxious when you eat food. So like, I feel like that's like a budam for me. That's like a, I just like the word budam. I know we have, we can say it similar in English though. You can say like, oh, you know, I feel like lots of pressure about that. I feel like this responsibility to enjoy the food. I right, take care. But yeah, so go Billy Maths. <laughs> Quick maths. So, but like with something that's 70 cents, like you don't really care if you finish it. You just eat as much as you want, throw it away. You don't have to feel like pressure to, to enjoy it or eat slowly or quickly or do anything. So that's why I like it. Oops, I just spilled some, the carbonated water, but that's okay, it's just water. It'll come out. Um, so yeah, you feel a lot of pressure, but the, with the sandwich, you just feel no pressure. I, I don't care if I finish it. I don't care if I throw it away, if I made it wrong or, you know, it's nice. So sometimes I want that. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three, quick maths. <laughs> the man's not hot. Scrub, pop, pop, boom, boom. Every day, man's on the block. I feel like you are a very relaxed person. I try to be. I don't know if I am, but I try to be. I wasn't, I, I actually, it's, I'm trying to because uh, when I was a kid, I was very, very hyper until I was a teenager. <laughs> two plus two, that's net. <laughs> Quick suak. Man's on the block. Anto. Scrub. What bands do you like? Um, I like a lot. I don't listen to too much Korean music though. What are some bands? You, uh, let's see. So Michael Jackson, of course. I've liked him since I was a kid. Uh, Jamiroquai, I like that too. I just bought your book a few days ago. Awesome, thanks for the support. Billy's a closet and memer, yes. I am often lurking on uh, meme subreddits or places like that, I like them. But I try, I try to post nice memes on my um, Twitter page that, that people can share, like related to Korean. Never can enjoy the song fully. So you don't know how to do it, you get to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a black weird part. See the girl on the block. So I'm going to play a song for you. Oh yeah, yeah, cool. Hey, thanks. 
There's actually lots of Koreans who tell me, "Oh yeah." I heard that. There's many Korean people who told me. I, if, I, if I look at my Google page, my YouTube page, I can see what percentage of people are watching my video. And there's actually a lot of people watching my videos from Korea. Korean people, which is funny because I'm not teaching English. I'm teaching Korean, so they don't need to learn Korean. But I found out a lot of people watch my YouTube videos to listen to me explaining Korean in English. Or talk about Korea in English, and they use that as listening practice because they say that I speak very clearly in the videos. Quack quack quack. Cause it did. No no. Are you like translating a like literal translation? Go see quack quack quack. Cause it did. No no. What the heck is this? Is an electrals only event. Yes, you have to have at least IQ of 180 to come here. Yeah, I try to speak very clearly when I um, do YouTube, but in my day-to-day -day life, I don't speak very clearly or slowly at all. Um, but I try to because I, I think it's better. But like normally, I grew up speaking very, like I said, I was very hyper and I spoke very quickly and not clearly. And when I talk with my little brother or my, any, any of my siblings, when I talk with any of my family members, but especially my siblings, then I revert back to my original way of speaking, which is very fast and very uh, sloppy. So, but it's okay, we kind of do it to be fun. Like sometimes when we have a little brother, we talk like this together. That's an example of what I might talk like normally when I'm with my little brother, just to be kind of funny. So we try to purposely talk as messy as possible uh, so that other people can't understand us, just to be funny, even if no one else is listening. It's like an inside joke to speak garbled to each other. But we can understand each other because we're used to talking like that. We'll also sometimes speak in, mix, we'll mix in French, even though we don't speak French. We don't know very much French. We'll just mix it in as much as possible. I'm, I'm not the oldest sibling. I have an older brother, a younger brother, and an older sister. And my older sister is, I believe, six years older than me. Yeah, she's six years older than me. So she would be, what, 37, I believe, or 36, 36, 37. This, your sister does that too? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, think it, I think it's fairly common for siblings to have their own kind of way of talking with each other. Talk like old lady. <laughs> That's funny. How do you like talking like this really slowly? I had a friend who I talked like that with. Uh, when I was a teenager, though I don't know where he is now, but we used to talk like that too. Oh, look at you! You're looking all dapper with the shoot there. And you know, no, or Herbert. <laughs> Herbert's different. Oh, hey there! Looking mighty good there. Oh, come on! Well, don't be afraid. I'm not gonna hurt you all. Oh, I already made the sandwich. I already ate it. I ate the, made the whole sandwich. It's over a thousand calories and I already ate it. So I'm only going to, I'm going to cut this stream soon because I don't want to stream too long. Um, can you interpret for yourself in Korean? Yes, I can, I can speak Korean fine. That doesn't mean I can say 100% of everything in Korean because I'm not a Korean. But yeah, I don't have any issues speaking Korean. I like, the, I like doing impressions. Someday I'll do an impression stream. I can do a lot of uh, impressions of characters. Especially, has anyone seen the movie Kung Pao? It's a terrible movie that I love. Uh, it's one of my favorite bad movies. It's called Kung Pao. Yes, Megan, thank you. Thank you for your support. Cinco Diablo? Oh no, that's terrible. <laughs> Anyway, there's a movie called Kung Pao, and I can do every single character in that movie. Except the... Wait, no, I can do the girl too. Yeah, I can do every single character in that movie. Originally, that movie was mostly done by one person, but I can still do that. A Family Guy impression. Um, I can't do Family Guy characters. I can only do like, oh, you're going to have to get me. I think there's like a, like a naked guy that runs around with oil or, on him or something. I, I can't remember. There's that guy. I can kind of do him, but mainly just... Herbert or 
a couple random characters. I can't do the regular Family Guy characters because they're pretty difficult. In Jill, Terry, then Beautiful Turkey. I'm not sure what that means. Kung Pao, not Kung Pao Chicken. It's a Kung Pao movie. It's, in my opinion, it's the best, worst movie ever made. That says it. And every single line in the movie is horrible. Every single line. So if I meet someone else who has seen that movie, enter the fifth, yes, exactly. If I meet someone else that's entered that, that's seen that movie, they will know every single line of dialogue if quoted. Lewis's voice, which one's Lewis? I can't remember which one's Lewis. Oh, Lois, I was, I'm, I'm dumb. Well, Peter? I can't, I can't do her voice, she's, she's really high, she's pretty high. Um, hey, Stewie, nah, I can't do that. That's pretty cool if you could do that. <clears throat> Incredibles 2, 개봉한 것 같아요. 우리 남은, 아, 예, 개봉한 것 같아요. 언어 두개 말하세요. <laughs> Everyone here is a weep. 빌리 님의 다른 언어 안. Italian? Um, well, I did French for five years. And they and everyone in France says, if you want to learn it Italian, you just need 10 minutes. <laughs> no, I've never learned Italian. I only know like, buongiorno. And you know, the fake stereotypical Italian words like, ciao, a mozzarella, a pizza, with that kind of fake accent. So, you know, racist type of impression. I can't speak Italian though. I think it would be nice to know some basic Italian, so I'd be open to it. But it's a me, it's a me, a Mario. Yeah, exactly. It's a Luigi, a Mario. I love the pizza. How, no idea how to speak it, really. Pizza, yes, I love pizza. I have pizza in my refrigerator right now. I got some yesterday from Domino's. Karato <clears throat> Yukio. <laughs> it's a me, a Mario. Show us the play button. Oh yeah, I showed that. Okay, I'm back. Domino's, Domino's. I like Domino's, but you have to do, you have to get the right kind of pizza from each place. Like Pizza Hut and Domino's, they have good pizzas there, but you have to pick the right kinds of crust and dough, crust and cheese amounts and toppings. And then you can make it okay. But like if you do just New York style crust with extra large New York style crust, double cheese, and that's it, right? That's it. It's good from Domino's. That's good. But if you do like all the random toppings and stuff, I think it's just okay. I think that their pizza, their base pizza, just the double cheese, like New York style thin crust and plain tomato sauce and no toppings tastes pretty good. Pineapple on pizza. Yeah, I like pineapple on pizza, but I wouldn't eat it all the time. I think that you shouldn't only have pineapple on pizza. I think you're missing out if you only have pineapple on pizza. But I think you shouldn't be afraid of trying new things, especially food. You shouldn't be afraid of trying food. You don't have to like it, but there's nothing wrong with it. Putting pineapple on pizza. Yeah, that's Florida. That's Florida. Florida is not, Florida is just its own thing. Oh, I stay, if I go to Korea, I stay at my mother-in-law's house because I couldn't, I couldn't afford to just stay there and in a hotel, that would be extremely expensive. And I don't want to rent an apartment for three months. That's hard too. Um, so yeah, I would, but I can stay there for free as long as I want, which is nice. You want to know versus me, HMV? <clears throat> um, I would be a uh, mire jumbi. Typical Korean pizza has corn and guguma somehow in it. And a microscopic thin layer of cheese, so thin it might as well be like graphene. And then lots of toppings that you didn't want. Potatoes and stuff. I'm just kidding. I like Korean pizza too. It's just different. It's not like pizza in America at all. So I miss American pizza when I'm in Korea and I miss Korean pizza when I'm in America. Okay, have a good night. See you again. How do you pronounce? 
Dio. You pronounce it as Dio. <laughs> Dio. How do you feel? Calzones are great. You know, you got the you got the flavor pocket. You got the flavor pocket, George. Calzones are pretty good too. Uh, the problem with calzones is you got to cook them right or they get too soft on the inside or too hard on the outside. So if you get that right combination, they're pretty good. Mix random stuff with your school lunch. Yeah, Korean's got some unique pizzas. Do you like Hot Pockets? Um, if I ever need to use the bathroom, then Hot Pockets are great. Yeah, you'll give you a Can you survive Korea being a vegetarian? Yeah, you could. Pretty easily. Um, you'd have to, you know, eat different foods because most Korean food has some animal product in it. I'd say most, at least. But there is still a lot of Korean food that <clears throat> doesn't. Baked, then fried. Oh, interesting. Never had that before. Never had a fried calzone before. You play Fortnite? No. I don't really know about Fortnite very much. I don't play League of Legends. I don't like, I didn't like it. I played League of Legends once and I didn't like it. So I didn't play it anymore. But the funny is after I played League of Legends, I interviewed at that company because I thought it'd be fun to work there, even though I didn't like the game. And I told them that in the interview on the phone, like we had a phone interview first and they're like, oh, so do you play League of Legends? I'm like, no, I don't like it. It's not my style. And they're like, oh, okay. So I thought they wouldn't invite me for an interview, but then they still called me, flew me into LA for at downtown LA at that time uh, when I wasn't living in California. They flew me in to do an interview and then I didn't get the job, but I then flew me back out. So that was fun. Uh, do I have any favorite YouTubers? Yeah, I like, I, I like some on my, like, YouTube channels that are related to what I do, like related to Korean stuff. I like Talk To Me in Korean's channel. I think they put out a lot of good content. Um, I watch Dave, World of Dave. I, I specifically don't, wa I specifically watch his videos because I like practicing, I like watching how he does editing. And I think his editing is pretty nice and I like that kind of editing style he does. Um, I think he needs some help with his audio, but his video editing is great. So I watch those videos, yeah, Dave. I watch those videos sometimes so I can get ideas for ways of editing. Um, so I think it's pretty useful. And actually watching that has helped my editing lately to improve a bit. So I'm trying to watch other YouTubers for that. Let's see. Um, for my personal YouTube, I watch Captain Disillusion. I like that. I've liked that for a few years. And then recently he got more popular. So I'm happy about that. And I also watch a couple channels that give advice for like filming, like how to film videos and how to edit, stuff like that. Mario Pensip? Yeah, pizza, a calzone is like you take a pizza and you fold it in half and then seal it like a, <laughs> what do you call it? Like a pot sticker. And then you bake that. So the outside's dough and you can hold it and the inside's all the fillings like the cheese and the sauce. Anyway, I'm going to stop this stream because I don't want to go on too long and I have to do a bunch of work today editing a new video. I'm editing some interview videos right now that I filmed in Korea right in front of the, uh, like there's this big stat, this big area. I filmed the last interviews there. So if you watch my other interview videos, you'll see where I'm talking about. I'm filming some new videos. I edited a new video yesterday. Today I'm going to add subtitles to it and fix it and polish it. And so I got a bunch of things to do today. Thanks for coming though, everyone. And I had a fun time and I'll do another one of these streams possibly next week or the, if not next week, depending on my schedule, then the week after. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for coming. Krum. How do I stop? There we go. Ah, uh, it's me, Abelie.